Welcome back to Today in Rocket Science. I'm Adam Balkin. Tinkerers from across the country came together in Wisconsin to start their own chain reactions in the 2014 Rube Goldberg Machine Contest. Today's our national competition for uh, Rube Goldberg. We started um, in October building these projects with the task of zipping a zipper. A Rube Goldberg machine is, a, is an overly complex contraption. The goal is to accomplish a task, and so every year there's a different challenge. Uh, this year, the final goal of each machine is to zip a zipper. It means doing something the hard way. <laughs> You're taking familiar objects and using them in unfamiliar ways. So it starts here where we place this gold, um, the fool's gold piece in the scale here, and it will actually weigh down the pencil so that the marble ball will roll. The ball actually unravels the old drill and release the balls on the chopstick into this funnel, which will raise the one side of the ladder to tip the ball into the pot zipper. I think it's just a fun way to learn different things about physics because I'm not, like surprisingly, I'm not the biggest physics fan actually, but this is actually really awesome. Here goes nothing. Science, problem solving, and engineering, and it's fun because we get to compete. Come on, the model's on the rim. And they're learning about teamwork. They're learning about uh, engineering, art, narrative, storytelling, humor. They're learning about all of it without being taught it. They're almost teaching themselves. The most important thing to me is simulating a real atmosphere of an engineering team. We had to work together, solve problems, just everyday things that engineers do. The problem solvers of tomorrow are the Rube Goldberg machine contestants of today. In upstate New York, students are taking science to the next level as they square off in science and technology at the New York State Science Olympiad. Our Sheba Clark explains how the event got some girls in on the competition. The New York State Science Olympiad is an event students work for all year. It's not just like you're doing like science experiments, but exactly. like, but like you're, you're exploding stuff. Christina Pendleberry and Nicole Page have spent hours testing the strength of their project. All for this moment. Again, nice job, nice job. Very good, very good. This is their first State Science Olympiad competition for them is to start to their long-term career goals. Well, I want to be a doctor, and so one of the events is anatomy. I didn't do anatomy, but that could help. Three, two, one. An objective for the Olympiad is to get more girls interested in science and technology. I like the connections that science has and like the understanding behind it. And so I think I would, if I go into any branch of science, it would probably be environmental science. Parent Kim Pendleberry is a mechanical engineer. She says she knows how male dominating the field can seem. If they go up through school doing these kind of things, they don't even, they won't even think that it's odd that they're doing it. Virginia Curry has been on the board of directors for the Science Olympiad for 20 years. She says getting girls involved in sciences has been an accomplished goal, but minorities are still lacking statewide. We'd love to see more African-American and Latino students come. We've been very successful um, in recruiting girls. Curry says 13,000 students statewide participated in Science Olympiad. She says this is the first year a Rochester City School got involved in the high school competition. Curry says she hopes this is just the beginning. We would hope that community members would encourage their school districts, you know, to continue to support this program. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Sheba Clark. One group of students is taking engineering to a whole new height and aiming high to break a Guinness World Record. Leanne Wallace has the story. Just focus on the frame for the horizontal stabilizer. You could say things are a little busy for students at the Aerospace Division of Westwood's Engineering Club. We've got a bumble of activity going on. We are assembling aircraft. We are building the capsule and tuning it up. Well, this is going to be mounted on the bottom of the capsule. It takes a bumble of activity to attempt their lofty mission. We are trying to break a world record um, by dropping a three-foot wingspan paper aircraft from the edge of space. The current Guinness World Record of highest paper plane launch is just over 89,500 feet. 
This group is looking to reach as high as 100,000 feet. It just involves assembling something that can work. So it's actually got two injection heads. A 3D printer is helping to move things along. And we can just um, rapid prototype any parts that we need, which is really handy. We can seal around the edge. So Mr. Russell says these kids down. are the ones running the show. You know, if they need a piece of software or they need a piece of hardware, you know, I do my thing. It's student-led. You know, we set the mission goals together, but they're really the driving factor. I'm just their humble servant, and it's really student-centered. Okay, hold it down. And he's just there to let them know that the sky, or in this case, space, is the limit. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Leanne Wallace. Well, that does it for this episode of It Ain't Rocket Science. Remember to find more hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your neighborhood. Head over to www.connectamillionminds.com. And until next time, it's been a blast.